This lesson deals with measuring devices. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter two, starting at page 27. The first measuring device we're gonna talk about is called an ohmmeter. It's a device that can measure resistance. The resistance measurement should only be done with the element removed from the circuit. And the reason for this is that most ohmmeters use a current source to pump current into a sample and then measure the voltage across the sample and then take the ratio. Putting an ohmmeter in a circuit can change the circuit's behavior. The symbol we're gonna use is just a circle with the symbol for ohms inside of it. The next device though is actually meant to be used in an active circuit. It's called an ammeter. Now, it's, this is very commonly mispronounced as an amp meter. It's not, it's AM meter or AM meter. And this is a device that when connected in series with a circuit element can measure the current flowing through the element. We'll again use a circle, but with this time an A inside of it. And because current has a direction, red terminal and the black terminal have a meaning. This is typically the plus and the minus terminal. So current flowing from the red to the black would appear on the meter as a positive number. If it were flowing the other way, it would appear as a negative number. So here's a circuit where I've got two elements in series. I'm gonna to have to break the circuit element to stick the meter in. This is usually the hard part. What the meter is gonna read is from the original circuit, 12 volts divided by 100 plus 200 or 300, and that's 40 milliamps. If you were to reverse the terminals, have the black here and the red over here, you'd actually read minus 40 milliamps. And what an ideal ammeter does is it acts like a short circuit between the black and red terminals. The next measurement device is called a voltmeter, and a voltmeter is a device that can measure voltage across a circuit element. You can use the same round symbol with a red and black terminal again, because there's a polarity, and then we'll use the letter V inside the circle to indicate it's a voltmeter. If I had this circuit with 12 volts with a 100 and a 200 ohm resistor, and I wanted to measure the voltage across the 200 ohm resistor, I would put the meter in parallel with the 200 ohms. And what the meter is gonna read is 200 divided by 200 plus 100 times 12 and that's eight volts. If you reverse the terminals and put the black here and the red here, you'd actually read minus eight volts. And so an ideal voltmeter acts like an open circuit between the red and black terminals. The last measurement device is actually a circuit it's called a Wheatstone bridge. It's a circuit that uses an ammeter to measure resistance. It can also be used in other applications. The most common we'll see in lab is a scope probe. So we have four resistors. We're trying to measure the unknown resistor we'll call it R sub X. Now, if you can vary one of the four resistors such that the current in the ammeter is zero, then the resistor R sub X is equal to R2, the value varied at two, times R3 divided by R1. Now, why would that be true? Taking the Wheatstone bridge circuit from the previous page, let's assign some currents. I'll call the current in R1, I of R1, the current in R3, I of R3, the current in I2, I of R2, and the current in R sub X, I of R of X. And I'll assign the polarities based on Ohm's law of plus and minus for V sub R3 and plus and minus for V sub R X. Again, if you can vary the resistor R2 such that the current in the meter is zero, then what that's saying is that the current I R1 equals I of R3 and that I of R2 equals I of R X. Now, when you have the same current in two elements, they're said to be in series, although this doesn't look like it's in series. They, R1 and R3 are, and so are R2 and R sub X, because there's no current here. So we can use the voltage divider rule. The voltage across R3 is gonna be the resistor R3 over R1 plus R3 times the voltage V sub S. Likewise, for the voltage across R sub X, it's gonna be R sub X over R2 plus R sub X times the voltage V sub S. Now an ideal ammeter has no voltage across it. It looks like a short circuit. Let's go around this loop here where the rise in voltage is R3, the drop is zero, and then the drop of R sub X. So what we have then is that the voltage divider for R3 is the same as the voltage divider for R sub X. The V sub S is drop out. So if you have a battery that's aging, it'll drop out of the equation. Now let's divide the numerator on the left-hand side by R3 and the denominator. So I get a one divided by R1 divided by R3 plus R3 over R3, or one. Do the same for the right-hand side of the equation with R sub X, so one over R sub X is one, R2 over R sub X, and R sub X over R sub X is one. We could simplify this equation, throw away the ones, and just says that this quantity has to equal this quantity. Now if you cross multiply, you get R1 RX equals R2 R3. Let's take a look at the circuit at the top of the page. And this is how I remember the balance condition. If the current 
Then the meter is zero, and this again by adjusting one of the resistors, then the product of R2, R3 equals R1 times R sub X. So now you can solve for R sub X, it's gonna be R2, R3 divided by R1. The resound bridge is what we use to measure resistors prior to the digital ohmmeters. This technique is still used in a variety of instruments. It is also used in lab as part of the balancing of a scope probe. And these are some measuring devices and some of their properties.